I'm Sharon Glotzer. I'm a professor at the University of Michigan. I've always just been curious about how things work. I, I'm obsessed with patterns. I see a pattern and I want to understand why that pattern, um, what causes that pattern. And sometimes if you see the same pattern in two really different places and two really different kinds of systems, like a natural system and a synthetic system, then I find that um, really fascinating, trying to understand like what do they have in common? I love also doing science with others, working with students um, just really excites me. Um, that moment where, you know, you have an idea and you're brainstorming, you and your students or your collaborators, you're, you're all brainstorming and it's, it's like, it's almost like jazz. Everyone has their own instrument and somebody says something and then someone else riffs off that and then someone comes in with a completely different point of view and you get someplace that you wouldn't have gotten to on your own, that's like the most exciting thing to me. Since I was six years old, I knew like I wanted to be a scientist, even though I'm not sure how I knew what that was. Um, and, but I was very fortunate in being able to go to really good schools and, um, and then getting, you know, landing in a great research group in graduate school with uh, an advisor who was just a, an amazing mentor who made me feel I could do anything, uh, even if I couldn't. And, uh, um, and then I just, you know, a lot of things just happen to line up well. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, of course there, 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 you know, there are always challenges, uh, you know, am I going to pass this class? Am I going to pass this exam? Um, you know, am I going to get this, this, this job that I, that I want, right? Or, you know, just challenges in terms of, um, you know, research not working out the, the way you think. But I never really thought of those as challenges because they just, they always teach me something, make me think about, you know, how, how else I can come at, come at something um, differently. If you think about human civilization, we've always been defined by whatever materials were um, available to us from the Stone Age to the Iron Age to the Bronze Age, you know, the Silicon Age, whatever materials we had available to us that we could master defined what we were, um, what we were able to accomplish as a society, as a civilization. And if I look forward and I think, okay, well, what's the next big materials age? Um, it's not necessarily going to be defined by the discovery of a single new magic material, but it's going to be defined by our ability to mix and match different kinds of materials at different lane scales into exactly the kinds of structures and organizations we need to have the properties and behavior that we want. Um, and so when I think about um, the, the future impact of my work. It's, it's the ability to eventually have materials by design and on demand where you want them, when you want them, for exactly the purpose that you want them. Trust your gut. Um, choose a research topic that, that you're passionate about that you can't imagine not working on. There are so many different kinds of research problems that one can work on. And there's so many people working on all these different research problems. And picking the one that really gets you up in the morning that you're thinking about all the time, um, I, to me, that's, that's so important to being successful, right? We're so privileged as researchers to be able to try to you know, discover you know, how nature works and how to harness nature to engineer new technologies. Um, and so being so privileged and being privileged to be able to pick the things that you want to work on. If you pick the things you're most passionate about, that's where you're likely to make the biggest inroads and to have the biggest impact. Mm -hmm.